So I'm very happy to be here with Jeff Watcott, who's CMO at uh, none other than Brightcove and That's been great. a good friend of the industry for many years. Great Absolutely. to have you Absolutely, it's great to be here. Thank you, Michael. And thanks for participating in the survey as usual. No problem. So one of the things I'd love to do, uh, Jeff, is just to start out by giving people a sense of what Brightcove's doing and sure. what the cloud means for you. Sure, so we basically take organizations that are content centric, that have you know, video content, either media companies or marketers mostly, and we help them put that content in the cloud, allow them to get it all the places where it needs to be, and do that securely and protect the content and monetize it if they need to. And we're huge believers in the cloud because you know, in any content-centric business, the cloud is where your content needs to be because that makes it closer to the users, makes it possible to transform it in all the different formats that it might need to be for the multi-device world. And we help about 6,300 customers around the world do that on a regular basis. What would be an example of a customer that just you feel would never be able to use what you do without the cloud? Well, New York Times, great example. I mean, they, uh, they publish obviously huge amounts of content on a daily basis and an increasing amount of that is video content and they have that on the homepage of the New York Times. And by having that uh, in our system, they're able to get the right article with the right video to the right user in real time and deliver that in a way that's very close to the end user so they get a high performance you know, experience. They're also able to deliver advertising yep. in it, and those are things that happen in real time, in milliseconds, in the cloud, to allow the right ad to get the right user. You couldn't really do that if you were trying to serve data way back from a data center somewhere, the New York Times in, in New York. It just yep. really is unimaginable that you'd be able to accomplish that without the cloud. In fact, the intersection of the data that's coming from the user on the web with yeah. the content that you can serve is key there. Absolutely, it's amazing what happens in a few milliseconds yeah. you know, on the web. It's yeah. just uh, uh, tremendously amazing what goes on out there. What's the key latency time now that you need to be able to make sure that a user is being served appropriately? Well, you know, if we don't get content playing within a second or yeah. a second and a half, yeah. they're they're gone. And I just thought yeah. I was just reading some study data on the way over uh, just before coming over here um, about how users perceive that, and they definitely say, you know, if I don't if the content doesn't play immediately, I'm out of there. You know, right. I just right don't even, I'm not interested in looking for the video content. And that's a missed opportunity for monetization. Oh, it's, sure. missed, it's just a huge missed brand opportunity and yeah. other things. So yeah. we try to, by getting content into the cloud, reduce that and get yeah. it down to a manageable amount. So you obviously participated in the survey, you've seen the results. Mm -hmm. what, what stood out for you this year? What was interesting to me was that, uh, you know, depending on what industry you're in, the uh, proclivity toward, or the, the, you know, the, the, or the, the, the the feelings about the cloud kind of changed a little bit. Yeah. In content-centric industries like the media companies, I mean, they're there for all the reasons that we just talked about. Yeah. But I think in some of the, the banking and other industries that, you know, they're a little more conservative, they've got yeah. data that's pretty private and they need yeah. to keep, you know, that, that uh, out of the cloud in some cases. And so in their cases, private clouds or hybrid clouds. Yeah. And so I think it's not one answer for everybody. It really depends sure. on what you're trying to do. Yeah. Well, certainly the survey highlights that everybody thinks that hybrid is the answer, but, but let's talk a little bit about sure. what's actually driving public cloud usage, because actually yeah. you use effectively public infrastructure. Absolutely. Right? I mean, yep. we operate our own data centers, and we also use some of the Amazon infrastructure, and, and we're looking at others as well. So what do you see as some of the drivers for both public, private, and hybrid, for example? Well, I think one of the huge things is obviously flexibility. The yep. ability to just light up a thousand servers to convert data you know, in from one format to another and then shut those off yep. in seconds it's just amazing. I mean, yeah. you could never do that in your own data center, including our own data center. Right. You know, we back up trucks of disk and compute every week to deal with the growth that we're doing, but that's, you know, uh, not something we can do, you know, in seconds. And yeah. so having that ability to burst out to the cloud when we have load, to, particularly for compute intensive tasks, is just something that uh, you can't get any other way. But yet you still have your own data center, so there's obviously some reasons for it. So talk a little bit about those are the examples that obviously hold people back. Sure, well for us it's really about cost because yeah. we're operating at web scale. I mean we do almost a billion video views a month. Um, we're you know, tra tracking billions of analytics you know, uh, views or analytics uh, you know, uh, events and so forth. And we have you know, petabytes of stories that we're managing. And so at that scale it makes sense for us to have our own data centers to for a certain portion of our traffic, but yeah. not all of it. For the scalable workloads, the things that 
that can spike up all of a sudden, we take advantage of public cloud because it gives us that flexibility. And do you think you're fairly typical of the kind of uh, user that is going to be making those trade-offs and deciding what goes private versus public? I think we are at the scale that we're are, we yep. are. I think if I was you know, starting out Brightcove you know, today, I would certainly start on public cloud infrastructure yep. and start building plans for as my business grows yep. you know, to, to actually put it into, uh, into a hybrid type approach. But certainly to get started, there's no better way. Now you're obviously a good example of what I talk about as a trend, everything as a service. You've got mm. you know, content as a service, video as a service, mm. analytics even. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about what you see as some of the new services that are interesting coming online and maybe even some of your own? Well, so it's, it's very interesting because uh, you know, metadata as a service, analytics as a service are really, really interesting because what we found is that with analytics in our APIs, we're able to actually track what people are watching and store that in a massive you know, data center in the, in the cloud. And then we can provide that to our end users to actually change the user experience based on analytics data. So they can say, give me the, the, the content that appears to be trending in the last hour. And on my homepage, I want to promote the trending content, right. not just any. What, just not just any content. And that, the kind of feedback loops between uh, analytics data and the end user experience, I think, is very powerful. That's great. But I think we're going to see a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of interest right now, I think, in back end as a service for mobile apps where people are realizing, you know, if I need to go build an app, just connecting it to my traditional CMS may or may not be the right choice. Right. Connecting it to a very lightweight service that's specifically built as a back end for a mobile app can be a faster way of getting things to market, and that's been an interesting area. Great, so of course, I'm looking forward to next year, and mm -hmm. so what can we expect from Brightcove in the coming years? I know you're a public company, so there's only so much you sure. can say, but maybe sure. in a broader sense. Well, I think you'll see us continue along some themes of, of things that we have talked about this year. Um, we went out and bought a company last year called Zencoder, which is a company that really is a platform as a service for video um, encoding. Yep. So taking video and converting it from one format to another, which turns out to be a huge thing that needs to happen in the video world. And so that's our first example of a pure play API as a service offering that we've offered. Traditionally, we've offered kind of an integrated end-to-end -end offering you got all the features and functionality, but now we're saying, hey, if you want to just buy video encoding, we can offer that to you as, a, as an a la carte offering. Yep. And then we're going to see, I think from us next year, more and more a la carte services like that for organizations that want to kind of assemble and compose their own custom applications on top of a platform as opposed to buying a completed application, which the kind of earlier versions of Brightcove were. So you'll see us transforming to offer both the, the kind of full meal as well as the ingredients to cook your own meal, if you will. And I think that'll be a good fit for many customers. You know, I think you raise a good point there. I, I'm a big believer in what's going to happen here is as everything becomes available as a service, there'll be more and more discrete best of breed services that effectively p people pick and choose from. And the yeah. integration will become a key part of what they actually use. We see that all the time team. from customers. I mean, they're saying basically, you know, I love everything about your service except for this. Yep. And, and you put the Venn diagram together and there's not a huge amount of overlap between the different customers. And so by breaking it apart into its different factors and components, people can have it their way. Excellent. Well, great. I look forward to having you back next Excellent. year and then we can talk and find out whether we were right. Absolutely. Thank you. Good <laughs> talking to you. Good Thank to see you. Bye-bye.